Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about states of matter or phase diagrams. Sometimes you'll be hearing that people will talk about phases of matter instead of states of matter, but either way it's the same thing. So there are three phases of matter that we're going to talk about in detail, and those are solids, liquids, and gases. There is a fourth phase here called plasma, which I'll briefly mention, but we're not going to talk about it very much. So, if you look at this diagram here, you can see that the solid state of matter has a regular repeating pattern, but they're held firmly in place with a limited area. We have a liquid next, in which the molecules flow around each other, and there's attractions between the molecules, and um, which keeps them from flying apart, and, and liquids form the shape of their containers. There are gas molecules which fly in all directions at great speeds and they don't have many attractive forces. And plasma, at very high temperatures, atoms start losing their electrons. And we'll talk about structure about the structure of the atom later, but um, that's all I'll mention about plasma for now. So if we take a look at an animation from FET, which you've seen in class, but you'll also play with in this section. So you'll see that solids, if I click the solid button here, are tightly packed. And they're not, and they're basically just vibrating in place. You see that liquids are moving around a little bit more, and there's a little bit more space in between them. And you see that gas molecules are at the highest temperature, and they're furthest apart the molecules are bouncing each off of each other pretty violently, and um, and they're pushing on themselves and on the container. And as you can see, these molecules are moving at the highest speed. So you should be able to fill out a table like this based on what you've seen and what we've discussed. So the packing of solids is the most dense where the packing of gases is the least dense. The motion of the solid molecules, the molecules in a solid, are essentially they're in place, but they're vibrating in place, where the gas molecules are moving at the fastest pace. The molecules in a solid aren't colliding, but the molecules in a gas are having very violent collisions. The temperature of a solid is the lowest, and the temperature of a gas is the highest. If the molecules are really tightly packed, then they're under very high pressure. So, and they exert very little force on their surroundings. Where a gas, where the molecules in a gas are under very low pressure. So, but they exert a lot of force on their container. And the solid has a fixed shape where a gas has a indefinite shape. Now how liquids are different is that liquids have take the shape of the container. So the molecules are relatively close together, but they are able to flow so they can form the shape of their container. Now in general, a liquid has kind of an intermediate, has intermediate characteristics compared to a solid or liquid. So for example, its density is kind of moderate. It's not as dense as a solid, but definitely not as, um, as, as least dense as a gas. And they're moving, but there's some vibrations occurring, but they're not as fast as a gas. There are, su there are collisions occurring in a liquid, but they're not as violent as in a gas. 
the temperature of a liquid is somewhere between a solid and a gas, and the pressure is somewhere in between a solid and a gas. So the next thing that you would dis that we need to know is the vocabulary of moving between the phases, phase changes. So you can see in this chart that in this graphic that when you go from solid water to liquid water, it's called melting. When you go from liquid to solid, it's called freezing. When you go from liquid to gas, it's called evaporation or vaporization. And if you go from, so that term vaporization is probably a better one than the one listed on this because boiling is also considered a type of vaporization. And then condensation is going from gas to liquid. So you can think of when you pull that soda can out of your fridge that there are water molecules in the air that when they hit the side of the can, they slow down enough to form liquid. And then you can actually go from solid to gas. That's called sublimation. And, and from gas to solid, and that's called deposition. Now this happens with carbon dioxide at, at the pressure uh, at uh, sea level. So often in the theater you'll see like a uh, fog machine and or you can and you can produce actually this fog by taking dry ice which is carbon dioxide solid carbon dioxide and you can warm it up you can add water to it and it'll actually make a gas directly without the liquid phase and this can be analyzed through a phase diagram which is shown here So you should know that in a phase diagram, you have pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. So you can see that the units of pressure are ATMs, or atmospheres. In an atmosphere, one atmosphere, which is shown right here, one atmosphere is the pressure that you of air that is on top of you at sea level. So all of us pretty much are exposed to about one atmosphere of air on top of us. Now, if you go on an airplane, you will, you, you'll know that there, even though the cabin is pressurized, that you have less air on top of you. So that you notice that you have to swallow to equalize the pressure between outside your head and inside your head. And so one atmosphere is usually called the standard pressure. So let's take a look at A first. A has lower pressure and higher temperature. So you think about, well, what state of matter occurs at the highest temperature and at the lowest pressure? Well, that's a gas. And then let's look at C. C has high pressure. You're exerting a lot of pressure on the molecules to make them really close together. And has relatively low temperatures. Right, the molecules are moving very slowly. And what state of matter is that? Well, that's a solid. And as you can probably guess, this kind of an intermediate level of temperature and pressure in this region, depending on where in this area you're talking about, but in between a solid and a liquid, sorry, in between a solid and a gas, are liquids. So if we take a look more closely at a phase diagram and relate it to our phase transitions that we just talked about, you can see that along this line that I'm drawing on right now, that there is an equal amount of melting and freezing occurring. Now if you move to the right to the green area, there'll be you'll be you'll have more liquid than solid. And 
So essentially, you're able to, to when you go, go from one pressure to another, or one, one temperature to another, at a certain pressure or temperature, you can predict what state of matter you're going to have. So, and you can predict what phase transitions are, occur, are going to occur. And that's what you're going to have to do on the quiz, and you will practice that on the handout. You can see that in this phase diagram for water, that there are some some critical ideas that you have to know. So for example, the triple point is where all three phases of matter coexist. Which is really hard to conceive of actually, that you have a solid and a liquid and a gas all at the same time. But that's actually what's occurring at this very low pressure. Notice if one atmosphere is up here, that you actually have about a little bit more than one thousandth of that pressure. Hard to conceive of, but it's actually true. And you see the temperature is 0 0.01 Celsius, so just a little bit above, above the freezing of water, of water at one atmosphere. You can see that the normal freezing point Right? The term normal refers to the boiling point, the freezing point at 1 atm, right? At sea level. And you also have the normal boiling point as well. What temperature does water boil at at one atmosphere? Then you have to know what the critical point is. Beyond the critical point, notice that this line doesn't extend up here. So beyond that point, you cannot tell the difference between a liquid and a gas, right? Liquid is over here, gas is over here, and beyond that, in this area that I circled, you can't really tell between a liquid and a solid, because the pressure is high, and yet the temperature is high as well. And last but not least, I'm going to take a look at this phase diagram for carbon dioxide. So you can see that at one atmosphere, which is here, you can see that you don't have any liquid phase. You, that actually, when you heat from this temperature to that temperature, you're going through the transition of sublimation. And vice versa, if you were to go from this temperature to that temperature, you would notice that you would go undergo deposition, which is going from a, a gas to a solid. In order to be able to see liquid carbon dioxide, you have to multiply the, the pressure almost 73 times. That would allow you to go to a phase transition from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So actually at 72.9, you're actually at the maximum point at which you can still see the difference between a liquid and a gas. Above that, you get this again, the supercritical air fluid, which in which you can't really tell the difference between a liquid and a gas. So at this point, you should look at the handout and practice that, and then you can check your answers and make sure that you are prepared for the quiz. Thanks. Have a good one.